Welcome back to Home Theater Gurus. This is episode 24. So this episode is going to be where the rubber meets the road for acoustics. We've gone over our different tools we can use, you know, our absorption panels, we have combo panels, and we've now we understand how those work and what those are doing to the sound in the room. So now we're going to learn how to use them and where to use them and when to use them. So we're going to start with absorption and when we should use absorption, you know, what rooms dictate that we use all absorption, what speaker characteristics also dictate that absorption should be used. When I say absorption, again, all absorption. And then we're going to cover when we can start using combo panels, when we're really going to bring it to the next level and when those options are going to be available to us because there's going to be certain instances where we can't use them. And then we're going to break it down more from a budget setup, like where you should start if you're on a very limited budget to get the most, you know, the optimal sound. And then where you can begin adding panels from there as you get more money or your more funds become available. All right, so let's go ahead and start with all absorption and when we should use it. So from our episode on how to determine what a good speaker is, we know that we want a speaker that has good off axis. We know we don't want speakers that have 6 dB swings on our on axis. You know, so that means, you know, we have a plus or minus 3 dB for our entire response, frequency response, but we know that we don't want it to have, you know, a negative 3 dB, then a plus 3 dB that gives us huge swings. You know, so, but that's in another episode. That was in how to determine what a good speaker is. But we also know we want good off axis. It needs to resemble the on axis. So if we're faced with a speaker that has poor off axis like this one right here, now this speaker is actually a very popular speaker and this measurement was taken third party. A lot of very popular speakers were done by this person. So this is a, it was a very knowledgeable person that took this response. And this is a speaker a lot of you probably own. I've owned it. It's the worst speaker I've ever owned, or one of the worst. It's very harsh, and I even had it in a room that was all absorption. It still didn't help because the on axis is so bad. It's just not a good speaker. I mean, you can see right here with the on axis doesn't look good, and the off axis doesn't look good either. So if we have a speaker like that, say the on axis is good, which this one isn't, but the on axis is good and the off axis isn't good we need to absorb those reflections on the sidewall. Okay, let's go ahead and put some speakers in the room real quick. Okay, these are our 60 degrees. Got those 60 degrees apart. Slap a center there. All right, so we've got our direct sound coming here to our head. And just pretend those are pointing right at his head there. Okay, and then we're gonna have our ipsilateral off-axis reflection coming here. Now, we do not want this poor off axis to hit our head. Okay, it's going to negatively impact the on axis. If the off axis is bad, you know, we need to get this out of the room. This right here is gonna be really destructive. So we need to get rid of that. So we're gonna to need to put an absorption panel right here at this ipsilateral on both sides. We don't have a choice. We're forced to absorb there. Now, if you had a speaker like, you know, the one I showed you a while ago, the on axis is trash too. So um, it's not going to help much, but you're doing the best you can with what you have. You're forced to absorb. And you're also going to have, you know, you're going to have your reflection over here, your contralateral cutting through, coming back. You know, you've got to absorb that too. So you're going to have absorption panels here and here. All right, and then on the back wall, the same thing, we're gonna put absorption right here. Now on this back wall, if you remember the room mode calculator episode, this entire back wall has a lot of room modes. You know, all the ones cutting through the room this way are bouncing off this back wall. So, I mean, you can actually put some really thick absorption back there if you want to, and then we can put combo panels over that absorption or scatter plates to help liven it up where we need it. But with this speaker here, we don't want anything, I mean, really everything needs to be absorption because the sound, you know, the off axis isn't good. So we do not want the on axis or the off axis getting into the room if we can help it. So that would be a scenario where you are forced to absorb, you know, one scenario. Now let's say your speakers are good. Maybe they're good, maybe they're bad. It doesn't matter if you have an open wall over here and now we have, say this whole side is open to a kitchen or a dining, you know, some other room. Or for what, maybe there's a large entrance right here that you don't have doors on, you know, or whatever. 
there's a lack of reflection on this wall. In other words, any of your off axis that's you know out here is just getting lost. It's you know it's kind of the equivalent of being absorbed because it's not being reflected back to you. So in this case, you're also forced to absorb, but for a different reason. You could have extremely good speakers with stellar off axis but you're gonna be forced to absorb here because you want to kind of equalize the sound to get a symmetrical sound, you know, left and right. If you just let this side reflective, it would sound vastly different. It would sound nothing like this side because you're basically, you know, have no reflections on this side and a lot of reflections on this side. So even pink noise, you know, when you're playing the sound, you know, setting your levels, this side would sound totally different. So this would be a reason that where you're forced to absorb. Now let's say this back wall back here is open to another room, a kitchen or something like that. Now remember if you have a long enough reflection, you know, this wall back here, say there's a kitchen, this wall's, you know, 20 feet away, you don't have to worry about absorption. You're far enough away to where that reflection is going to be delayed so much and have so much less energy when it hits your ears that you can pretty much ignore it. All right, so now we're going to look at a room that has good speakers in it. Good on axis, good off axis. So now, you know, it's going to be treated differently because we want to take advantage of what makes our speaker so good, that good off axis. All right, so we've got our walls drawn back here and we're going to start drawing some reflections. First, let's get the on axis. Okay, we've got, so we're just going to do the mains right now. We'll do the center in a minute. Or a few minutes. Okay, so that's our on axis. We've got our ipsilateral right here. Uh, crappy arrow. Right here's our ipsilateral. Now, we want to make the sound stage as wide as possible, right? So we've got our speakers at 60 degrees, and that's helping immensely. But we know if we have a reflection even further out, it's going to help, you know, that spaciousness is just going to get even bigger. It's going to really make the sound or the, you know, what's in the room sound larger than the room itself. This is what's really going to take it to the just, I don't want to say the next level, but it's going to be huge. It's really going to make it sound much, much better and much more, much more spacious. So we're going to use a combo panel there. So we're going to call green combo panels. So we're going to use a combo right here and a combo there. So that's going to reflect the off axis back into the room, but it's going to be absorbing our vocals and dispersing kind of above that. As we're transitioning out of the vocal range and above it, we're going to begin dispersing. Okay, so orange is going to be our contralateral. It's going to be coming from the opposite side of the room. All right, so that's our contralateral. Now, if you notice, say this left main, that contralateral reflection is coming from the wrong side of the room. And we talked about this a little bit in the earlier episodes. So because it's coming from the wrong side of the room, it's gonna kind of skew the sound stage. It's going to kind of screw it up. Instead of something that should be happening on the left, you know, over here, we're gonna be getting sound cues over here on the right and it's gonna kinda of smear it. It shouldn't, they shouldn't be coming from that direction. So we don't really want that or we don't wanna leave them untouched. So we have some options here. We could go with a black, you know, an absorption panel there. If we did that, we would uh, definitely strip or clean it up. It would be nice and, you know, uh, our left and right, that separation would remain precise. We wouldn't be smearing that detail any at all. But we also have the option of using a dispersion panel or a combo panel right there. And the reason we can do that and get away with it is it's going to absorb, you know, our vocals and below, you know, a couple thousand hertz and down. We're going to be, you know, absorbing most of it. The, what's going to be dispersed and put back into the room is just going to add spaciousness. You know, it's not going to be direct reflections back at our seat. It's just going to add, you know, a more spacious, airy, kind of a larger, more live sound, but it's not going to be destructive. And that's why we can get away with a combo panel right there. So, you know, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put a black and a green right here because it's going to kind of be personal preference. You know, uh, it has been proven, you know, a lot, a lot of blind tests have been done on this. And people do like a combo panel there because it does add some spaciousness without being destructive. But especially if you're on a budget, there's nothing wrong with putting absorption there. 
All right, so then we've got our rear wall. And like I said a little while ago, if you want to put, you know, a foot of insulation behind acoustic fabric, there's nothing wrong with that on the rear wall. But we're going to say this is a regular wall, like in a living room or, you know, some room that needs to be kept aesthetically pleasing or you don't want to eat up all your room or your space. We're going to put a couple panels back here, some absorption panels right where this, these reflections are going to be. So let's go ahead and draw the reflections in. Uh, let's draw them in black. So our reflections are coming like this. All right. Now we've also got some reflections like this. As well, you know, a second reflection. And those are going to be pretty strong too. But there's an easy way to fix those and that is to, we're going to absorb right behind the seats, but right here, we're going to use dispersion panels. And that's a really, really good way to keep the back area alive. You know, some people, like there's a method called uh, dead front end, live back end. Now we're not gonna do a dead front end because we know we wanna keep that, those uh, ipsilateral reflections. We really wanna use combo panels there if we can. We don't wanna kill those. So we're not gonna go with the old dead front end, live rear end. So the best thing we can do is absorption behind the seats and then to the left and right of it, we're gonna throw up some combo panels right there. Okay, and that's gonna help, again, a more spacious sound, room filling, you know, cause we want it as live or as uh, immersive and spacious as possible, but we do want our vocals to remain crystal clear and focused. All right, so as you can see, there's a lot going on in this room, especially when you start looking at the different reflections, you know, from two speakers, and we've still got another speaker to go, you know, your center. Now, just in case, you know, you, if you don't remember from the other earlier episodes, these can all be found with uh, a mirror, you know, the old mirror trick, finding the reflections. Just have someone sit in your seat. Now, you're going to have to do all your seats, all the ones that are important to you. So, you know, say you sit in this seat, someone slides a mirror along the wall, and you say, oops, I, I see that speaker, I see the baffle. Mark it with some tape. You know, you slide down a little further, you see your center. A little bit further, you see this one. You know, and then you're going to have to move over to this seat. Do it again. So, I mean, you're going to have a lot of tape on the walls. And the same thing on this side. So, uh, I mean, it can take you a few minutes, but it's going to be accurate, you know. And another thing, make sure the panels are not too high. We see this a lot of times. People get, you know, acoustic panels in the room. They sit down and the panels are above their head or barely, you know, coming down to their ears. They need to be properly positioned. Remember the episode on bookshelves versus towers? We looked at how to determine where the vocals are being produced. If your vocals are being produced from your woofers, you better make darn sure those woofers are being, you know, caught or those reflections from those woofers are being absorbed by these combo panels or these uh, absorption panels. If, you know, you're just going by the tweeter of the speaker and that's where you're putting your tape, you're not doing it right. You need to pay attention to everything that's being produced by that speaker and make sure all those frequencies are being treated properly. You don't want to miss them because then you're just throwing money out the window that you spend all this money on panels and they're not even placed right. All right, so for the center channel, we know that on axis, I mean, that's easy, just right straight forward. Okay, but we're gonna have our reflections coming off the wall here. Now, it's kind of hard to see, it's kind of a mess, but you're gonna notice that when you start using your mirror trick to find the reflections for the center channel, it's pretty much gonna coincide with some of the other reflections that you've already treated usually the contralateral reflection. I mean, it's not gonna be the ipsilateral. It's gonna be this contralateral. It's usually gonna fall real close to it, if not, you know, being treated by the same panel. So if you use an absorption panel right there, you're gonna have maximum clarity and focus of your vocals. But you're gonna lose a little bit of the spaciousness, but that's gonna be okay because, you know, you've got your ipsilateral right there. We're treating that, you know, with a combo. So it's gonna help, you know, get that spacious sound that we want. So it's okay really to have either for that center channel because you know if you have your absorption panel everything's being absorbed all the reflections if you use a you know a combo panel you're still getting your vocals cleaned up you know so it's going to give you a little more airy sound and spacious sound while maintaining vocal clarity so this is what I was talking about again it's going to be personal preference you know what do you want do you want to keep the vocals in that center channel, you know, as clear and clean as possible. And, you know, do you want these contralateral reflections that are coming from the wrong side of the room 
to be able to throw energy back into the room. And again, it's not going to skew the location like it will if you left the, that untreated. You know, it's still going to be treated. It's a personal preference and neither one of those options are going to be wrong. So a lot of times, you know, if you have the budget, a really good option is to absorb directly behind the seats and use combo panels for the rest back here. You know, just put your combo panels here, maybe one back here. You know, that's really going to just liven up that back area, and especially with the surrounds, you know, and your rears. It's going to give you a very huge sound. But it's going to be more pricey because combo panels are not as cheap as, you know, something that's really easy to DIY or if you go to ATS Acoustics, you can get them pretty cheap, you know, just a regular absorption panel. But you are going to be losing some of that spaciousness in the back end. Now, a lot of us are kind of on a budget, so we need to do this incrementally. We can't just go throw everything into a room all at once, so we need a place to start. So now we're going to go over where you should start and where they're most important. Like if you only have a few panels, where should they go? All right. Now, first of all, behind the speakers, that's the last place you should put them. This is not a first reflection point. You know, we'll see guys where they only have a few panels in the room or the first place they put them is behind the front speakers and that's wrong. That is not a reflection point. That is a place that we treat SBIR, which we're going to go over in a future episode, but it's not a reflection point. That is uh, basically a reflection that comes off the front wall and causes a null somewhere in the modal frequencies that we can calculate by measuring off the front wall to the baffle. So it's something you measure to see if you have and then you see if you can fix it. Like I said, we're going to cover that a little bit later. But we are treating our room for reflections right now. So we've got two panels, two absorption panels. That's what we're going to start with. Where should those absorption panels go? Well, if you're right up on the rear wall, like say you're a couple feet from the rear wall, five, six feet or closer, I'm going to tell you to put those two panels right here, long ways, right behind your sofa. And here's a picture of my old room. And uh, that's, you'll see I have two panels right there behind the back wall. And it takes about two, two foot by four foot panels, you know, horizontal to get put behind a couch and cover all those seats, you know, all the reflections coming to absorb all of them. Those are going to be really destructive. All right, so let's go ahead and draw all those in. All right. Now I'm just going to use this right speaker so we don't clutter it up too much with uh, all these reflections. And let's go ahead and draw our direct sound there on axis okay now we've got two more panels that we just got where should we put them now a lot of you guys are probably thinking we should go with the ipsilateral but I wouldn't go there and the reason is because if you've got a good speaker with good off axis I would rather have this good off axis sent into the room even if it's a straight reflection than absorb it it's still going to sound better. It's going to give you that nice wide spaciousness. But, you know, your vocals are going to be smeared some, but you've only got two panels. And this is not going to be the most important place to put them. And it's going to be the wrong, really, choice to use with a speaker with good off axis. So I would use it on the contralateral because it's coming from the wrong side of the room. So I would put my absorption panel there. And hopefully, you know, it's also going to catch the center channel. Because let's say I got two more panels. Let's go ahead and draw this one over here. Two more absorption panels. I would check and make sure that that is being covered as well, that center channel. If it's not being covered as well, say the reflection for the, you know, the centers back here, you know, let's go ahead and draw all that in. I'd go ahead and put it right there too, just to clean up that center channel, get those vocals cleaned up. If that's not cleaned up, you're going to have trouble hearing your vocals. This is where people come and, you know, they are boosting their center channel trim because they can't understand the vocals. You know, this is why right here. But now you've got several seats. So it's to cover all the seats. It's usually going to take two panels to cover the contralateral and the center speaker here. So we're going to say this is six six panels. So if you're on a budget, this is what I would do if you're on a really tight budget. I would not treat that ipsilateral right there. I would leave it alone. Now if you've got bad speakers, you don't have a choice. You're absorbing everything anyway. So go ahead and absorb there. But then, we're, 
I don't remember what color we're using for combo. Let's think. Let's go with blue. All right. You get a little more money, you know, a couple hundred dollars, and you want to go with a combo panel because I mean, you've a, you've already hit all of the really major areas that we need that you would absorb if you're on a budget. You know, you're trying to get the most out of your money. So I would throw a combo panel up here for this Ips ladder on both sides. And that's really going to open that sound up and clean up the vocals, you know, coming out of your mains. Mains do produce vocals too, quite a bit. When people are, you know, on the screen or walking around, you know, it's not going to be just your center channel. So this would be kind of where I would start building my system up if I'm on a budget. Now, if I've got a little more money, of course, throw some combo panels back here. Like we talked about, we've got some reflections coming around, you know, that are going to eventually hit us from behind. You know, we've got this main over here bouncing off and coming back this way and then our center is doing the same thing so i'd put some combo panels back here so if you get two more put them on that back wall you know then if you get a few more you know put them back here so so this would be kind of the path i would use if i was building it slowly over time now of course when you got these panels here you know i would experiment with you know a combo panel here and here just see if what you think you may like it better you know, you can just easily throw a panel up in front of that absorption and listen to how it's going to change the room. Your vocals are still going to remain nice and intact and focused, but it is going to give you a little more spacious, airy sound by doing that. And it is pleasing, but then you're getting into more money. You know, this is going to be kind of a budget method. Now, remember, that's not all that's going on in this room. When we go over these reflections here, we're just going over the horizontal reflections are really strong ones. You've also got reflections on the ceiling, but now those are going to be off axis vertically and most of our speakers are going to have a much tighter vertical dispersion than they do you know that really wide horizontal dispersion so the ones on the ceiling are going to have less energy but that doesn't mean they're not important you know you could put an acoustic cloud up there with some absorption just to kill them completely you know you could use uh, some combo panels you could do that too now of course it's going to be easier to find these reflections on the ceiling because they're going to be in a line, a straight line. So three or four panels, you know, see on the ceiling, you know, you've got a panel here, here, you know, that's going to cover all your mirror points for all those seats. So, and they're all going to be in one place. You're not going to need them in the back. Now, I'm not saying combo panels back here, you know, above the seats and everything wouldn't sound good. I mean, it would because you're still going to have some reflections off of your, you know, your surrounds and your rears. I mean, they're not going to be super strong in intensity. But I mean, there would be nothing wrong with a combo or even straight up dispersion panels right above the seats, but it's going to cost more money. Now, do you need treatments on the ceiling? I mean, that's really, it really depends on the speakers. You know, if they've got a tight vertical dispersion, I'm going to say no. I mean, not really. Any little thing that's going up there is going to be so low in energy, it's not going to be a real factor. Now. That doesn't mean if you don't have, you know, if you got the money, sure, why not? You know, if you want to throw some more money at it and you can put treatments on the ceiling and make it look good or you're just happy with it, you know, it doesn't bother you, then, you know, go for it. But I wouldn't put my money there until everything, you know, my side walls, my rear wall, you know, till that was done first. Now, one issue you may have on the ceiling, just like we discussed, you know, the SBIR on the uh, front wall, you know that reflection you could have the same thing on the ceiling but that's going to be again like in the lower the modal frequencies you know a couple hundred hertz you may notice a null in your response and it could be you know because it, those low frequencies but again the low frequencies you remember off axis they're strong so those are going to have a little more energy on the ceiling so you may notice a null at your seats from that and we call that like a, a ceiling or a floor bounce and this, of course, would be ceiling bounce. So for that, you know, you may try some thick absorption. You know, if you measure it and you see that you have a problem there and you, you've identified that that's where it's coming from, you know, that would be a reason to have an acoustic cloud, you know, of all absorption to try and treat or get rid of that null that it's causing. And we'll go over that whenever we go over SBIR for the speakers because it is related. Now, down in the description, I'm going to put a ton of links to different panels you can get. All right, guys, so I'm going to be moving really soon, maybe by the end of the month. So I'm going to be trying to get some of the episodes I need to get while I have a home theater or, you know, my system is set up. 
So I think the next episode is going to be on the Odyssey Multi-EQ Editor app. You know, that $20 app that you can get off the Play Store whenever you get your Denon or your Marantz receivers. I want to get that, and there's going to be a few others, and if y'all have got any suggestions, you know, just, just let me know. Now, of course, once I move, you know, stuff like this, like this episode here, and the majority of the things we're going to do, or that we're doing, they're not going to be affected because all I need is a dry erase board. And we're also going to get into subwoofer design soon. We're going to be, you know, I'll have a shop that I can use, so we're going to be doing, you know, DIY subwoofers. We're going to actually design it, and, you know, y'all get to choose the wrap that we're going to wrap it in. And it's going to be something user or living room friendly, you know, not some big huge box because a lot of us just can't fit those. We're gonna design and build something a little bit smaller, probably a ported 12, you know, and something that has a ton of output. Now, when I say a ton of output, I've had guys come to me with, you know, the Marty subs or the 12 cube refrigerator subs with 18s, and they put them in their living room, and I've designed using this driver, you know, something similar to what we're gonna be doing, and they've said, man, if I knew this sub that you designed for me and I just built was gonna perform like this, I would have all these in my room and not, you know, these Marty subs because they're so huge. And this little sub we just designed is so much power. And I mean, it's, it's just impressive. It may not go as low, but you know, from 20 Hertz on up, it is a beast. So we're going to get into things like that. And we're also going to test that little sucker and we're going to see how it compares to database measurements. You know, we'll do compression test on it, but, uh, you know, that's going to be a lot of fun. And, uh, Heck, I may even try to blow it up and see what it can take. All right, guys, don't forget to look down in the description. Like I said, I've got a lot of links I put down there for some of these panels, and especially these combo panels. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that little notification bell down there so you know the next episode comes out. All right, guys, it's going to be it for this one. I'll see you all next time.